So in this video, we're not going to test a REST API. What we're going to do is we're going to investigate a problem with this API and look at the architecture and figure out how this problem arose and how we can fix it. This is going to be... All right, so I was going to show you a video of just exploratory testing a REST API. I was going to dive straight into it. We're going to use Postman proxy. It was going to be great. But what happened is, as soon as I started my um, API, it failed. Let's have a quick look at the failure. So I've got an application here. It's a very simple application. You can actually see the architecture on the board. So what we've got is I've written a very simple app. It's written in Spark framework, which is a Java framework. It's a lightweight web framework, which basically means it gives me a very simple HTTP server called Jetty and the ability to route calls into code that I've written. So I make HTTP calls in, Java app accepts them, does stuff, it's nice and simple. And you can see how simple this application is. Look at that main method. That is as simple as it's gonna get. Basically call the REST service, not even call it, just start up. Everything is static, it just works until we close down the application. What could possibly go wrong? Now what's interesting is very often when we are testing applications, we take the view that and we do unit testing. Unit testing is really important. We then try and do some integration testing and that's great. Now the approach that I've taken here is I've automated a whole bunch of stuff. The only thing I've never done is actually start up the application and run it because one of the things I do in my integration tests is you can see here we've got the main method here. What my integration test does, let's say, there we go. The integration test in the before class actually runs the application. I've never ever tested this application with the real server, at least not for not for a while. I did at the start just to make sure it's working, but I haven't done that for a while. So now if I run the application, I'm just gonna run it all from within the IDE, nice and simple. There's the main method, I'm just gonna run this main method. So there it is, it tells me it's running on port 4567. You can see what's gonna happen. Localhost IP address 4567, heartbeat, just to see if it's working. Server error. Now the reason that this confused me is that I have a lot of tests. Let's have a look in the test framework. I have got a lot of unit tests that just check the API. So when in the app here, I have made a design decision that says, I'm gonna decouple this as much as possible. So I've got an app layer in there that all it does is it's entirely decoupled from HTTP. So it's got its own special request format. That's all unit tested. Everything works. I can see that all my API calls work within the API itself. I can run these tests. They all work. You can see messages coming back and forwards. All those exceptions, by the way, are supposed to be there. Um, <laughs> because the way I've written the code, I'm just logging things out differently. So I'm confused as to why that's not working. I even have integration tests. These start up the application and actually send in real HTTP messages using the uh, URL connection in HTTP, the HTTP connection. So if I run these tests, they all work and you can see that it's actually sending in HTTP messages, it's getting it back. So why, when I send in this, does it not work? What on earth is going on? Well, that one, it's not, going, it's not working because um, nothing's running. That one's obvious. This is a good point at which to start looking at how we debug these things. If it's not running, I'm expecting to see this, but where's this error message coming from? This error message come from Zap. Why is that? Because I am using a local host 8888 proxy called OWASP Zap. This is started in the options local proxy. We can see that my debug proxy is listening on port 8888. So if I just create an entirely new session here, just so you can see it, I'm gonna make a request on here. There's the heartbeat gone through and 
connection request refused. So if I start this up, we should get a different result. There's the browser. There's the proxy. We should see this request come through. There we go. Heartbeat internal server error. So I'm feeding all my test requests through a proxy so that I can see them. That's very handy for me. And I'm doing that in Chrome, which is why you can see all this extraneous information. And I'm using Foxy Proxy to configure the Chrome pointing to the proxy. So I've got a basic thing. Now, if we're testing an API, normally we don't use a browser, but I, this, this heartbeat request is a GET request. I can issue it through the browser just to quickly check if everything's working. And it's not. But we saw all the integration tests working. Our first attempt to hit the URL doesn't work. What on earth could be going wrong? So we're going to debug this now. There's something wrong with the, the test approach, or there's some assumption in here that I haven't catered for. So let's quickly see what happens. This application is pretty simple. We've got main, all it does is start at the REST server. So let's have a look at the REST server. All the REST server does is root request. When the REST server roots requests, it calls the actual API. So if I put a debug statement in the um, get heartbeat, which we've got there, I'm going to run the application, run it in debug mode. Let's see what happens. So having set the debug in the heartbeat, what I'm going to do is issue a request. And I'm expecting the system to pause on that breakpoint, but it doesn't. So what does that mean? That means that in my architecture, we're not actually hitting this. I have a problem here. I've got a problem early in the system, but my integration tests worked. So there's something different between the real world and my integration tests. Let's have a quick look at what the integration tests do, because that might give us some clues. So there is a test in the integration test for Heartbeat. Here it is. So let me run that test and have a look. So I can see here that this puts in a content type header of application JSON, sends it, everything works. So maybe the problem is that the messages that I'm coming through now don't actually correspond to that. Let's try something else. I am in Postman. Postman is pointing to Zap Proxy on port 8888. So I will see all the requests that Postman makes. I'm running the application in debug mode. I have a breakpoint on the heartbeat process in the app, the API part. I'm expecting this to trigger a breakpoint. I send it, I get an internal server error. There's no breakpoint triggered here. Let's have a look at the request. So I can see that there are some slight differences between the request that I'm sending here and the request that I sent through from my actual test code in that I haven't put in an application type. I haven't put in the type of request or the type of response I'm expecting. Now for a get, that should be okay, right? Let's have a look at what happens then. Perhaps the issue isn't in the API. The issue isn't down here in the API. The issue must be in this transport layer. Now the transport layer is just a REST service. The REST service is just a request to the heartbeat, except I have this bridge. I have this Spark API request, which takes a HTTP connection request, the, the external world one, the one that the Spark framework uses, and converts it into one that I need, because I need a, a cut down version in order to maintain that separation. Now, now we can see what the problem is. I'm willing to bet if I put a breakpoint here, then issue the request again, send, and now we've got a breakpoint. So if I have a look at request in here in the debugger, 
uh, uh, uh. okay so I'm finding that a little bit odd but what I'm going to do is let's see if this works I am going to change the code a little bit let's see what happens now send the request received a 200 error a 200 <laughs> response so that was good so if I say get lists send we got a empty response back 200 that's what I was expecting what this demonstrates after all this time is that even when I have a test strategy that has lots of unit tests, lots of integration tests, when we <laughs> deploy it as an app or run it as an app, we can still have errors because our integration tests have coded assumptions in them. When we make requests, if they're setting up in a certain way, we've made the application to pass our tests, but it hasn't past the real world it hasn't survived in real world at all because we haven't hit it so always when you're doing your testing try and think through the risks in your test approach and at least do something to mitigate it now i knew i was going to do a test process anyway i didn't expect to find a problem there i didn't anticipate that as a risk i fixed that risk now so in the next video i can actually do some exploratory testing on it because i fixed that problem but Make sure your test approach mitigates the risks of your application and think it through from a technical perspective and try it out at least once. So if I start this up, we should get a different result. Oops. <laughs> Scrap all that.